Welcome back. As we continue our online education success series, in this episode of the Explorations Learning Network, we'll chat about doing the work. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. As we discussed in our two previous episodes, managing time and participation, fulfilling the work in an online class falls into two different categories, participation and completing assignments. Remember, participation is how you interact with the instructor and other students in the class. These interactions can be activities as simple as chat rooms and discussion boards, or can be more involved and include video conferencing or virtual worlds. However, there is more to taking an online course than just participating. In most cases, you'll have to complete assignments, sorry, and other activities that reinforce the material being presented in the class. There are a plethora of assignments and activities that occur in an online class. Of course, there are more traditional learning activities that include reading assignments, writing assignments, essays, quizzes, and exams. However, there are also other types of activities that can make online learning more interesting than a conventional class. Things like interactive games, team learning, virtual learning exploration, drill and practice, uh, journaling and blogging, virtual labs, web quests, the list goes on and on. All right, so let's break it down. Online assignments typically fall into six different categories. Assessments, self-reflection, research, experimentation, collaboration, and presentations. Let's take a closer look at the different types of assignments that you may encounter in each of these categories. Assessments. What most people would regard as tests. I know, but don't freak out. The cool thing about online tests is that they are designed to help you learn the material, not to test what you've memorized. Many of the new forms of quizzes, exams, and other assessments in online classes use what the makers of a CELIS online learning system refer to as deficiency diagnostics. The quiz or exam that you take searches for the gaps in your learning and then helps you tackle those gaps. For example, let's say you're taking an algebra class and you're learning about quadratic equations. Oof. The learning platform may give you a series of short quizzes that assess how well you can solve a quadratic equation. But based upon your answers, the software discovers that your skills with fractions are not tip-top. The software will then provide you with extra instruction to make sure that you can manipulate fractions and solve quadratic equations. The great thing about online assessments is that the quiz or exam is never the same. This ensures that you actually need to understand the subject in order to pass the test. Don't worry though, thanks to all the other activities available in online learning, you'll know the material before it's time for you to take the test. In order to get ready for a quiz or an exam, you may need to complete a self-reflective activity. There are all kinds of self-reflective activities. The most popular activities include journaling, blogging, and concept mapping. These activities give you a chance to review what you know by discussing it with yourself and in some cases, such as blogging, sharing your thoughts with others. Concept mapping, or mind mapping, is a great way to organize your thoughts. Concept mapping can be as simple as drawing bubble ideas on paper and connecting the associative bubbles. You can also use some fantastic software such as Mind Manager or apps like Graphio to create maps that help you organize projects, essays, and presentations. Research assignments are currently the bulk of learning activities students experience in online classes. But unlike traditional research, these online activities can be pretty cool. 
Research activities include reading assignments, writing essays, critiquing articles, studying case briefs, scavenger hunts, document analysis, interviews, literature reviews, and web quests. Research activities usually require you to hunt for information as well as report on what you discovered in your research. Remember to cite your sources anytime you present information that is not your own. Some of the most fun and exciting online activities fall into the experimentation category. These include gaming, art projects, field work, laboratory experiments, um, puzzle solving exercises, and simulations. The great thing about experimentation activities is that they stimulate every learning mode available. Visual learning, auditory learning, kinesthetic learning even, which is touch-based learning. No matter which mode is your dominant learning style, you'll most likely benefit from online experimental activities. In previous episodes, we talked about how collaboration in online environments is made easier because of the removal of limitations created by time and distance. You can cooperate with other individuals at any time from anywhere in the world. Collaborative learning activities include brainstorming sessions, group problem solving, group reports, peer editing, role playing, debates, and other activities. Remember to always treat your other online learners with respect when working on collaborative projects. Finally, presentation assignments include the creation and sharing of your work. Presentation assignments include activities such as art projects, case studies, design projects, oral reports, and portfolio presentations. Software such as Microsoft PowerPoint, Apple Keynote, and Prezi are great ways to share information using text, graphics, and even video clips. Holy monkeys, Batman! With all these activities, there is no way that your e-learning classes will ever be boring. So what are you waiting for? Get in there and do the work. Until next time. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.